This is a representative volume element of a bi-directional composite. I don't know if you've tried to model this kind of composite. What it will require you to do is to first create the virtual domain, apply the boundary conditions that is necessary to impose all stress deformation in X, Y, and Z, as well as in plane shear directions. And finally, post-process the result. The sort of simulation you get in the end are this, where it shows you first the uniaxial extensor deformation, and then secondly, the implant shear deformation, just as an example. So you're wondering how you get started with this kind of thing, then do not wonder anymore because I'm going to presently show you how to create the virtual domain that is represented like this. In two subsequent videos, we'll be showing you how to apply the necessary boundary conditions and then post-process the result. If you're interested, then sit back and relax as we get started with this video. So as we get started, this is a typical representative volume element for this bi-directional composite at a micro-mechanical level. And some of the information we need to be aware of are first the stacking sequence for this design. Here I'm considering a 0 by 90 by 90 by 90 stacking sequence. So that means there are four layers in this. My 0 degree direction is basically the Z axis that you see here, and then all the other fibers on this direction, the laminates in these directions are the 90 degree, and then this one is also the zero degree direction. We're going to be working with a volume fraction of this 5.5% in this instance. So it's a typical uh, glass fiber polypropylene matrix composite. And the dimensions that we're going to work with is basically a total length of 140 microns and two implant directions of 100 by 100 microns. And our fiber will have a diameter of 15 micron for an A glass fiber. I've not chosen to consider the interface region for the fib fibers in this instance, but of course, you could go ahead and consider the interface region. I have a video here where I dealt with the unidirectional composite where I actually model the interface effect. So please do look at that if you're interested in, in that kind of thing. So if we look a little bit more as to what is really going on here. So first you've got the zero degree laminate, which is a laminate that's oriented al along the Z axis in this instance. So that's one of the zero degree laminate. And also we've got the 90 degree laminate. So we're going to create them separately and then we'll bring them all together as we begin to assemble this uh, bidirectional composite. So focusing only on the Z degree laminate. So it will have a dimension of 100 by 140 in the in-plane direction and since it's one of four stacks of laminate that make up the system. So the height of the laminate, which I've got H1 here will be 25 micron. Now just going a little bit more. So this will be the in-plane um, distribution of the fiber. So I'm going to with another arrangement of fibers where each fiber in this instance for this in-plane direction will be five fibers. I will show you in a moment how that comes about. And the distance of separation between the centers of the fibers is 20 microns. And the radius of the fiber in this case is obviously 7.5 microns. So typical dimension that we'll have. If we look at the number system as to the calculation behind this, so what we've got here is the typical volume fraction um, equation where N here is the number of fiber involved, DF is diameter of the fiber, and W is obviously the width or of this system, and H is the height. So if you rearrange the equation, then we we'll end up with N represented in this form. Because we want this number of fibers to be a finite integer, so that's a whole number, because you can't really have, have a fiber one quarter of a quarter, then we have to round it up. So that's what we've got this round function. So rounding up whatever we're getting as our calculation to a whole number. And that's what we've got as this round fraction. So if you make the calculation, substitute all the numbers associated with this system, where the volume fraction here is 0.335, which is at 5.5%, then we end up with five fibers. So for the zero degree lamina and the dimension that we're working with, we're going to have five fibers. So you could see one, two, three, four. And then we wanted some on the edges. So there will be two half fibers that make up a whole fiber in the end. So that becomes five fiber. So a similar thing will apply even in the 90 degree lamina. And if you go ahead and look at the distribution of fibers in this instance, something that will span a whole length of 140 micron, microns, then we end up with about seven fibers, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So seven fibers. And of course, the distance of separation and the dimensions are similar. So we've got a total length of 140 and a height of 25 microns. So the calculation that arrived help us to get that. So for the 90 degree laminar, the same kind of argument would hold, follow the same calculations before we end up with seven fibers. We're going to now go into Abacus and show you how to actually set up this domain. If this is the kind of content that you like, please, I do encourage you to subscribe to this YouTube channel so that when contents like this are made, you'll be the first 
to see it. I also want to highlight that there is a CM Videos Insider Group, which I regularly send every week newsletters talking about behind the scenes in CM Videos and more about products that are available on the CM Videos website. I also publish in this newsletter reflections from my perspective on a lot of computational modeling issues. If you are interested in this kind of thing, please do subscribe to newsletter. You'll also be able to read up to 100 articles already published on that newsletter. Thank you. So the first thing we need to do when we get into Abacus here is to create the laminar. So the first, so if we click here, so we'll consider by creating the fiber. So let's just get, say the fiber. So on this fiber system, we're going to use a extruding option for it. And what we know about the fiber system, okay, we can start from here and say, I want to create the zero degree laminar. So this region will be zero, zero as on the one corner. And the other region has got a total length of 100 and a height of 25. So we basically have this representation that shows us what we are trying to work. So we're going to then have to distribute the fibers in between. So I'm just going to create a fiber. So I'm going to use the middle here, you know, because it's going to be rented centrally. So how far away would this fiber be on the X axis? So I know it's going to be 7.5 on the X axis, and then it's going to be located in the middle position higher up of 12.5 because it's, so that's typically one of the fibers so all we are going to then do is to use this option so we select the pattern and we're going to then distribute it accordingly as we see fit so i'm going to then re remove this so that basically means i've got that fiber so i'm going to just create as many fibers as i want so that's okay so we've got the fibers distributed as it's supposed to be and there is a spacing of 20 as we indicated before and everything looks all right okay so what i'm going to then do is to use the trimming option so i'm just going to trim off all the edge fibers um, and clearly I don't want the other ones on the other side so we're going to trim off all this as well so we've got a system that we are interested in and then I click done so and we want it to be as deep as 140 because overall with total length of the system is 140 so that's one of the fibers that we have in mind so we can create the metrics for it so just simply the metrics that we're interested in so the metrics in this instance will be again 00, zero and 125 on the y-axis and and then we can then use a depth of 140 as well so we've got the metrics we've got the fiber and then we can then attempt to bring them all together in the assembly section putting the two together so we've got a system that looks so and then we can combine them so this will be so rv lamp zero degree so we want to use the merge option and we're going to separate the original instances and we return the intersections it's a good thing to return the intersections and then I can draw a box around that and that becomes my zero degree lamina. So if we look here, so we've got a setup which represents our zero degree lamina. So we can then go ahead and try and do a similar thing for the 90 degree lamina. So I could then go back and say, okay, I want my fiber now, the 90 degree fiber system. Okay, so the same kind of system will probably hold. So this time around, we're working with a total length of 140 and a height of that. So this will be zero, zero and then 140 and 25 is the height so this is sort of the system that we have now like we did before we just go ahead so if i if just go ahead and start from the middle here so this will be 7.5 and 12.5 all right so we can then again use this linear patterning to select what we want and then obviously we take this out and we can then we know that we are looking at about eight. That looks all right. The distance apart is similar to what we had before of 20. Um, and so what we can then go ahead and do now is basically to trim off all the edges. And then we have a system that we're happy with. So we can then do, okay, done. So remember on this direction, our depth will have to be 100 as against one fourth. So we can then go ahead and create the metrics for the 90. So we'll call it the metrics for the 90 degree system so similar to what we did before 0 0 on one axis 140 and 25 on the y axis okay and done done um we want it to be at the high depth of that so if we go to the assembly module we have this already existing so i'm going to suppress this for now so that i have only one thing on there so what i'm looking for are these two this and the 90 degree laminar so they are the two ones that we want and then we can combine them so basically we've got rove laminar 90 degree so we again do everything we've done before 
and then we'll bring it all together however we need to bring them all together it's going to be a little bit tricky so this is where we need to do something so we're going to have to rotate this system into two so how are we going to do that so what i'm going to do is i'm going to introduce some points here so if we say okay i want an intersection point so i'll click on that point and that point so that creates that intersection point and then i rotate it again and then do the same thing so i'll click on that point and that point that creates another intersection point so what i'm trying to do here is i want to introduce a central line a vertical orienting line that we can use to rotate the system so if we go on this second one so we want to create a that two axis using that point and that point so that becomes our vertical line that we're going to use to rotate the system okay so finally we are going to then say i'm going to rotate this system okay what axis am i going to use this axis by how much am i rotating it 90 degrees and that gives us what we want and then we click OK. So now we've rotated it by 90 degrees. So it should then line up nicely with the other case that we had before. So what do we then do? So I just need to reactivate the zero degree laminate. So if I resume that, so basically we have the two looking correct together. OK, so what we finally want to do is definitely to raise this up so that it can line up with that. So we're going to use the translation button. So we've got a translation button here, starting with this corner and lining up with that corner. Okay. So we've got the system now, the zero degree and the 90 degree. So if I switch this to part instances, so you can see it's looking about right. So what we can then go back and do is to create another instance of the 90 degree. So if we double click here, so we want the 90 degree laminate. Okay. So that's fine. And we'll probably do what we did before by rotating the system as well. So we select that, click here, click done, and we want it by the vertical axis and we want it by 90 degrees. Okay, so we've got that and then we just need to move it again from here where it was, let's say from this corner to that tip. Okay, so we've got also that and then the final thing is to create another instance of the zero degree lamina. Okay, and we've we don't have to rotate it so all we need to do is translate that okay from the base here to the tip there okay so now we could see what we have so we basically have the zero degree 90 90 and zero degree system all perfectly arranged and if you have other orientations and variations you could go ahead and do them but in this case we're only looking at the zero degree and 90 degree and zero degree systems so that's all we want so the final thing we need to do is to bring all that together into a single system so if i select that i say okay this will be my rve and bd composite that's what we want so we want to merge it return all the intersecting boundaries and select everything at one go and that gives us the one single result so if we go to the part module, we can see our parts, they are all perfectly in place. So the only thing that we want to then do is to try and create materials so that we can associate them properly. So first we're going to use our e-glass. So because we're creating only the domain, so I'm not going to populate it with anything we need. And then same thing we want to polypropylene and we create the sections associated with them. So e-glass section. So the e-glass section will be that. And then the polypropylene section so we'll also select the polypropylene section so all we now need to do is to assign the sections so how do we go about doing that so the, the easiest thing to do here is to take away some of the parts some of the cells so if i select here i'm going to, to switch this system to cells so i'll take away the cell so this is one cell if i click on there i'll select this other cell select this other cell select this other cell and then click done so that takes away all the metric cells leaving only the fiber in place so that we can then go ahead here and so on the section assignment select everything and tick that and then assign that to my fiber system okay and then still within the same window i'm going to tell it to invert display so that means it leaves now inverted taking away the fiber leaving only the metrics so again i select all the metrics now and then assign that to my polypropylene and then click OK. And then I'll resume everything. So once you resume everything, it looks correct. To visualize what we've done, we'll go to the material module. See within the material module, everything looks correct. So we've got the zero degree, the 1990 and the zero degree. And that shows you the 
represent volume element for this bidirectional composite. If you want to see how you can actually go ahead to model this by understanding what kind of boundary condition you need to apply to get uniaxial deformation, then this video will be for you. If you just want to post-process your result and get stress constraint data, then this video will be for you. Thank you for your interest in this video and I'll see you in the next. Bye-bye. <music>